From Upper Michigan Source, this is your Sports Eye of the Band for Thursday, April 26th. I'm Mike Ludlum. The Green Bay Packers had the 14th pick in the first round of the NFL Draft, but the New Orleans Saints came along and offered their number one pick at number 27, plus a mid-round pick, and most importantly, their first round pick next year. Packers General Manager Brian Gutekunst channeled his inner Ted Thompson and said, sure, but wait, there's more. Trading back up with Seattle, they ended up with the 18th pick in the first round. The Packers finally selected Louisville cornerback Jair Alexander. Alexander earned second team all Atlantic Coast Conference honors in 2016, but knee and hand injuries hampered him last season. He had 77 tackles, seven interceptions, and 15 passes defended in his three seasons with the Cardinals. With his potential to make an immediate impact, Alexander was too good to pass up for new coordinator Mike Pettin's defense. Meanwhile, the Detroit Lions selected Arkansas center Frank Ragnow with their 20th pick in round number one. Detroit, as most everybody knows, is pretty much close to last in the NFL in rushing offense and has been for a while. Ragnow will have a chance to start as a rookie, likely next to guards TJ Lang and Graham Glasgow. The 6'5", 312-pound Ragnow is a big, powerful lineman who scouts say has good awareness. High school baseball. Escanaba hosting Nagani. Eskimo won the first game 4-3. This is game two. Josh Brunchens had three hits and drove in two runs in the doubleheader. Courage Krieger puts this one in the left field, getting a two-bagger out of the deal, but the Escanaba Eskimos could not score in that inning. To the second, Eskimos get on the board. Craig Kameen, the base hit. Grant LaMarche will come around the score. Miners would hang in there for a while. Good bump by Jake Hill. When it was dropped to first base, Carter Richardson kept right on going and slid in safely. But Escanaba was able to sweep the doubleheader by the score of 9-4. Also in baseball yesterday, Norway took two from Kingsford, 10-0 and 13-3. On the softball side, Gladstone swept Ishpeming, 4-0 and 11-1. Nagani had no trouble with Manistique, 12-0 and 13-0. To college baseball, Finlandia blanked Northland College 5-0. Finlandia had a 1-0 lead on the Lumberjacks in the fifth inning, but they had to stop get that game when the oil-related fire took place over in Superior, Wisconsin. They'll make that one up in a few days. High school tennis yesterday, Nagani and Escanaba played to a tie at four, and the Eskimos blanked Menominee 8-0. Escanaba was the host for the Delta County Track and Field Meet. Rapid River won the boys' competition. Gunnar Larson and Logan Hardwick split the field events for the Rockets as they won with 163 points. Adam Bruce won two distance races and Calvin Tebow took both hurdles for runner-up Gladstone. Scout one Wonder won the 100 and 200 plus a replay relay for third place Escanaba. Terry Brower won the high jump and long jump for fourth place mid-peninsula, and Bark River Harris was fifth. The Escanaba girls won by nearly 50 points. Caitlin Lord won the pole vault, Peyton Rabatoy the 100 hurdles, but those were the only individual winners for the Eskimos. Mid-peninsula held off Bark River Harris and Rapid River for second place. The Wolverines were led by distance runner Landry Koski, who won the 1600 and 3200 and helped in the 800 relay. Jalen Lockwood paced the Broncos with victories in the 100, 200, and long jump. Emily Tebow won the high jump for fourth place Rapid River, and Sage Sisson took the shot put and discus for Gladstone. Lake Superior State has announced the signing of women's basketball coach Brandon Locken and taking away his interim tag at the same time. Locken was tabbed the 12th head coach in program history on an interim basis last June. After implementing a new system with a roster of with 10 underclassmen, the Laker women showed steady improvement through the season, highlighted by conference wins over Saginaw Valley and Purdue Northwest after losing to each earlier in the campaign. Locken's ties to the Lake State basketball program date back to his time as an undergrad, where he served as student manager under Lakers men's head coach Steve Hedinga for four seasons. NMU has fared quite well on the GLIAC All-League golf teams. On the women's side, Carissa Guthrie is on the first team with Carol Else, Haley Hewer, and Marquette's Avery Rochester on the second team. For the men, NMU's Martin 
Eliason is on the first team in Lake Superior State's Jason Kerr is an honorable mention. Grand Valley State won all three women's major awards and two of the three majors on the men's side. The turkey hunting season started Monday across the state. The crazy weather earlier this month is having an impact and a possible decrease in breeding last year has limited the number of one year olds. But according to a DNR wildlife biologist, the situation should improve as long as you are patient. Some areas the birds are still yarded up pretty heavy in their winter groups, which, make, which makes it a little bit more challenging to pull those toms out away from the group. But we expect that within the next week or two, um, as the weather warms up and the last bit of the snow goes away, that um, these birds will begin to break out into their um, smaller breeding groups and hunters are likely to have more success at that time period. That turkey was taken in the Stonington area. There is an app Sexton says can help you. It's called Michigan Hunt and it's available on Android and iOS. Sexton adds the usual counties of Delta, Dickinson and Menominee should have good numbers and then Alger and Iron Counties also, also should have a good supply. The season runs through May 31st.